besides the fact that I teach at the Faculty of Education and I make it a point that teachers try to express themselves to technology, I am very much interested on the way people perceive technologies and contextualize technologies in the reality that they are actually living in. Actually, along the same lines, I must say that I feel I'm very lucky for the sake that I lived half of my life before the internet came to be, and I'm living the other half, hopefully more than half, of the rest of my life in the age of the internet. And I'm saying this because I remember or I was used to the fact that um, I would receive telegrams or when Christmas comes, um, we used to call our aunt in America, in, the, in, in New York. And it was a time when we had enough space to get accustomed to the technology that we were working with and actually tend to use it differently. Then, with the onset of the internet, um, it's, the remote isn't working, I don't know. Hello? Mm. Uh, nope. nope. It's jamming again, sorry. I should switch this off, I forgot. Maybe we're better off with okay. a blackboard? Yes. So, um, then with the onset of the internet, things have changed a lot. And things are developing so fast that we are technically living in a reality, as my friend Gasser says, say, that no one has yet lived from cradle to death in the age of the, te of the technology. Actually, we are living in a special reality where I'm again... Okay. Where even at the work of place, workplace, we have four generations of people working together. And the latest generation is obviously Gen Z. And personally, I don't feel comfortable talking about Gen Z for the sole reason that this new generation is actually living in the consequences that were created by, by my generation. The financial crisis, the, 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 the economic instability, uh, global warming. And it's very unfair if we consider them in a certain way where we are not giving them enough time to express themselves. What do I intend to say? For instance, my father used to play with a paper ball. But he did allow me, and he even bought, Lego. It's moving on its own. OK. OK. Um, he allowed me to play with Lego and Meccano. So. <laughs> It's anticipating me, and it's stuck again. Anyway. Um, uh, okay, I'm back. So who am I as a parent to? <laughs> I'm back on MCAS now, yeah. Maybe I should get my laptop in, I don't know. This is a classic example of misinformation. It is, <laughs> yes. Thank you. I, I, I have the, the okay. Making sure the information is correct. Let's see now. Okay. So as I was saying, um, my father did allow me to play with Lego and Meccano, even though he played with a paper ball. So who am I to stop my kids, and I have an 18-year-old and a 14-year-old, from expressing the way they play, the way they live their life, through the screen. The issue is very simple. Um, I believe a lot that my kids, like many of you here, are the born digital. And you require your time 
Thank you. Where I can actually talk about you. And the issue is this, that DGN Z represent the first generation of digital natives. Then again, um, I don't like stereotypes. It's going on and so. <laughs> I didn't touch it. I can hold like this. Anyway. So, um, when we talk about stereotypes, we remember talking about the digital immigrants, the settlers, and the digital natives. Well, 20 years ago, I used to use pictures of old men like me looking at their mobile phone upside down. Today, those same people like me go running, or we try to at least, with buds wired. I'm, I'm not touching it. No, I'm touching it. Um, wired or not, and uh, well, I'm getting mixed up going on and so on, but anyway, I have to live with it. So, um, yes. One last chance. It's a controller. I'm, I don't think it is touch sensitive, actually. You have to. You know. So, the issue is that back then I would have been considered to be um, a digital immigrant. Well, people who are my age use tablets use wired buds, buds who don't have wires, like everyone else. So I don't really believe that these stereotypes should be employed today, especially when we have three generations of people who in one way or another were influenced with the internet and the technologies that brought about. Incidentally, after the internet, we will talk about the Web 1.0, which was nothing more than enormous encyclopedia. And the boomers, the Gen X and the Gen Y, or the millennials, could actually search and locate, but there was limited participation. Ultimately, the new generation, who were born in the age of the Reed Wide Web, they had a different kind of opportunity, where they were allowed to modify their content, actually being rewarded for creating their content and having a presence. And these kind of characteristics in the read-write web actually influenced the new generation, which also refer to them as the Gen Me. Why the Generation Me? Because when it comes to the employment of digital technologies, considering that this new generation has the capability of producing their own content, then they are also directors of their own content. They have instant gratification of what they want to do, of they what want to do. Unfortunately, it's again moving on its own. Pardon? Okay, doing it from there. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, even though. Um, we have procured the technology, the Gen X have procured technology, and Gen Y have procured technology for the Gen Z. We tend to define this new generation as being self focused. Self focused, and where they consider the self before the duty. Personally, I tend to disagree. And I tend to disagree for various reasons. It's very important that, or even for, for instance, in my case, because I work a lot with people from the younger generation, and I speak the same language of, or I try to speak the same language of this generation, it's very important that we have to see how we can, um, I'm multimodal today, you know? Um, we have to see how we, as educators, can channel the qualities of the Gen Z so they will be as constructive as we are actually even better, because now they have capabilities or new windows of opportunities that in our times we didn't have. We have a generation of digital natives where more than anything, they are naturalized to technology. They don't think about it. They just use it because it disappears into the background. Actually, we even tend to call them as being narcissistic. I don't agree. Why? Because even though I'm not a digital native, 
Even people my age are narcissistic and we like to have a presence online and things like that. But we have a quality that in the younger generation has still to be nurtured and developed, which is maturity. I'm not saying life experience, because you have a life experience which I don't have, so we learn from each other. Probably I have a maturity which will help me better to channel the qualities to move forward in life. Thank you. So that's why we have to consider, as an educator, I consider the process over the content. And the process is that we have to ensure that we focus on the qualities that make us human. Does it make sense to have a computer and make the younger generation compete with that computer? No. But if I have the computer and the capabilities of the computer are better than the one that I use, then I have to ensure that the young generation are being motivated to be constructive in these kinds of qualities. And it's very important when it comes to the internet on how to make best use of it, how to avail of it. So, this happens to be a book by Joseph Eon where um, um, I've been invited to write a review about it. And an important thing is that we focus on the skills, especially um, in this generation that we're living in the, in, the, in the fourth industrial revolution, which is more than anything being vague, because it's, it's still developing, but where we have to focus on the qualities that make us human. Yes. And in this case, it comes to the enhancement of the soft skills. The soft skills are the qualities that we tend to, think, to take for, uh, for granted. Then again, these same skills are what you use every day. Does anyone tell you how to project yourself online? You decide what you have to do. You reflect upon your own qualities. You are critic. You, you can criticize yourself. You accept criticism. So why can't the same thing, this kind of originality, be even enhanced and employed in formal educational settings? And this would lead even to a new form of teaching and learning. Up till now, I mean, I don't feel comfortable that many of you are attending classes which are very similar to what I had attended for 30 years ago or 40 years ago. Actually, education has to change from just in case, just in time, just for you. Personalization. Why personalization? Because you are original. You have all the qualities where you can be original. And that is what we have to work on. Technically, I work, um, I work out on Education 4.0, which should mirror Industry 4.0. And incidentally, when I talk about Education 4.0, there are nine points. Out of nine points, only one point is technical. Thank you. The rest is focused on the qualities that make us human. In the slide before, there was the word convergence. What is this? A smartphone? No, it's a piece. It's an extra weight. What makes it smart is me. What makes it unsmart is me. So, this can open you windows of opportunity. If I can prepare my students, my future teachers, to understand that they can translate to the younger generations on how to make best of these tools in a constructive manner. And that is where, so that is where, when we talk about these technologies, I talk about offering a new window of opportunity. We cannot remove the traditional literacies. Reading is important. Writing is important. Cognitive capacities are important as well. Entrepreneurship, thinking out of the box. Critical thinking is very important. But we have another opportunity, which are the new literacies. And the new literacies doesn't only imply that you know how to use coding or things like that, but how to express yourself constructively through the same technologies that use for everyday life. So it's very important to have a disruptive mindset. So thank you very much.